if there's one thing we all love in the four-wheel drive world, it's camping on the beach. Driving on the beach is just too good. Not so good for your truck, though. So since the very early days, I've had this procedure. Because let's face it, you know, mud, sand, salt, it just destroys things. It really does. And then you go and fill it up with water. But, you know, there's no way I'm going to miss out on the beach. And my family's the same. <clears throat> We've been having our beach holidays forever. And we're not going to change it because, let's face it, this is one of the places where you're just full on into the environment. And it doesn't matter what I've owned over the years. I've looked after it much the same way, which is every year, you know, before a beach trip or something like that, the wheels come off everything, it gets a good old clean and a Lanatec from one end to the other. Sometimes a bit more. And in the case of Milo too, well, she's seen enough water this last year, I can tell you. So first step, wheels off. Now, I'll tell you what, I love my battery tools these days. Didn't that change things? When you do this though, make sure you mark each tyre as it comes off. That one probably means rear left, rear front, front right, and right right or something. And pull everything else off too if you can. Now, I use, what's that Norton gearbox doing on the sink? Steel seal, not so good for that. Great for everything else. I use Citra Force and a pump bottle. That's my step one, I guess you'd call it. This stuff is a degreaser, but it's also about the strongest degreaser on the market, and it's totally natural, which is great, not just for the beach environment, but good for you too. I love using these bottles. They work really well, and you can adjust the nozzle so you can get into places too. Now, I'm basically just going to go berserk with it because it can't hurt anything. That's the wonderful thing about Citra Force, but it will shift the muck. And we're talking about the old Lanatec from last year. We're talking about dirt, oil, whatever else is on the chassis and on the suspension and even on the brakes. Once I've gone right through it with the Citra Force, I whop into it with my gurney. Now, when you're using a gurney, you do need to be really careful, if it's a powerful one anyway, to not squirt water directly into seals or gasket areas or anything like that. This is not that hard if you know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, just stay away from anything that's a moving part, all right? You could get yourself into trouble. What happens is you'll be blowing water and dirt into past seals, past gaskets, things like that. Probably a good idea to not let your dog do things like that, but crikey, how do you control a red dingo? Fair dinkum. <laughs> Always helpful, but that's what we call our dogs, helpful and useful. Oh dear. I learned most of my rust proofing techniques when we were mining in Lightning Ridge, because opal dirt is really corrosive. So I'm a big fan of a fresh coat of enamel, and uh, this morning I waited until very early in the morning to spray it. Um, that was because I didn't want the wind to pick up. Guess what happened? The wind picked up. And I'm using a real slow drying roof and metal paint. You don't have to do this. I'm only doing it because the cab looks a little rugged. I pulled some of the stickers off and it, uh, the paint came off with it. And it basically just needed another fresh coat of paint. If you want to do something like this yourself, you know, if you've got an old truck and you just want to flash it up, this is a wonderful way of making the body waterproof because for the next few years, you can guarantee that the water will just bead off a fresh coat of enamel. It's not expensive. Use roof and metal paint, sticks to anything, thin it down a little bit, and you just need a any old gun. I think so this one costs 30 bucks. I painted it with my slow drying enamel and then the wind picked up. So, uh, welcome to the new textured finish. Um, gee, it's kind of like Jurassic Park. There's all sorts of things in there. Ugh. It's not going to matter though, because <laughs> I'll just land and take it up later and give it a rub of the rag. Meanwhile, whopping in to everything underneath. I know from experience I'm going to use about a litre of steel seal. And these bottles are really good to use. They're just small enough to fit everywhere. But one of the crucial things here, of course, is you don't want to be using a spray pack. Most spray packs have some form of hydrocarbon in them, and that can be bad for rubbers and 
you know, in fact, it's mostly just bad for rubber. Whereas this, I've never had any problems with it at all. Straight product and squirt it out. You could use one of those pump packs, of course, and you could buy your uh, steel seal in bulk. The cute thing about this is that it will actually creep into all sorts of places, which is why I'm really careful around seams, especially body seams, because that's where stuff picks up. And of course, I use it on everything. You know, the only thing you do need to make sure is that you tighten stuff up, or you keep at least half an eye on it later on, because it will penetrate. That's what you want it to do, of course. Now I'm pretty much going ape here, with the steel seal. I do every year, I do on everything, especially around the springs, because there's nothing like Lanatec when it comes to leaf springs. And these are really good units too. These are terrain tamers back in front and utilise their greasable uh, non-inversion shackles, which have just proven really good. But of course everything rusts underneath the truck if you're not careful. So just, you know, be careful. Give it a good coating. Yep, as you can see, I don't just coat body panels and seams and things like that. I coat everything. And I find it's, as I said, really good around the springs. It's amazing how soft and quiet they ride. And make sure you do the inside of the rims and the outside and everything else. Have a look at this though. You can see why. Because this is actually where you get sand trapped on beaches, where you get water uh, immersion. Here's an old bushy's trick. Note the use of the feet to get the wheels on. It all depends on having the wheel exactly the right height above the concrete. And you know what? If your back's a little bad, it saves an awful lot of work. It really does. Now, I always start any nut by hand, and then I make sure that if I'm going to use a rattle gun, I've got it set really low. In this case, this AEG tool, I set it on one and because it's a quality tool it's an accurate setting which means it'll just do them up a little bit above finger tight now here's what i was talking about on the outside of the rim you can see these seams these have been blasted already but i'll give them another clean up because i could see sand in them before applying the steel seal again squirting on pretty much everything and then of course wiping it off with a rag you're not really wiping it off so much as smoothing it out and pushing it into the seams um, it makes it look beautiful of course <laughs> uh, now you need to do your batteries every year regardless whether they're outside or inside being outside means i need to look at mine more often really but um, all i do is clean up all the connections that's the poles and the heads and basically everything even the nuts need doing okay now it's funny because I've noticed just recently that on my uh, Lanatec grease it says food grade. So I don't know why I'm going to, uh, you know, take advantage of that, but I will. Now note the use of a rusty old spanner to do up the battery terminals. You know why, don't you? Because battery acid eats tools. There you go, folks. Freshly painted. Just waiting for some new stickers. All lanatec up. Running like a dream and ready to do another season. Ooh, I can just about smell the salt water from here.